Right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Y'all, we are rejoicing and being glad in that. This is Tamara V. Thompson with the Mom Thorns, and I am so happy to be here with you all on today. So today I'm going to be talking to you all about perception. Listen, we can teach on perception so many different ways, but I am going to be talking to you for a few short minutes today about how you perceive yourself, all right? And when we look at perception, we're going to look at perception and the definition that's like mental, a mental image, a concept of what you conceive in the mind, like a thought, all right? So what you think about yourself, what you speak about yourself, perception. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for this day, for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you for every listener. I thank you, oh Father God, even for myself, Lord. I just pray, God, that you bless all of us, Lord, to hear what it is that the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us on today, and that, God, we will, when this teaching is over, perceive ourselves as you want us to see ourselves, to think of ourselves the way you want us to think of ourselves. And, God, for this, we give you praise. We bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus, and we welcome in the Holy Spirit of God that will bring freedom and liberty in Jesus name. Amen. All right, people, let's do this. <laughs> so I told you all that we're looking at perception as a mental image. When we look at mental image, it's conceived in the mind, a thought. Now I want to show you all an image. I want to share something with you. And I was trying to get this to um, come up as an image on its own, but it won't. So you'll see it in a small little square. But I want you all to look at this for me. Now, take a look at this butterfly. This butterfly is looking at itself in the mirror. And what does it see? It most certainly don't see a butterfly. <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's looking at itself like it's just this little um caterpillar still at a stage of life that it is already far surpassed and sometimes our perception of ourselves y'all is off and I understand that you may not feel that way but there are times that there are people around you who can see what you can't see hear what you cannot hear perceive what you are not perceiving and so when you look at yourself in the mirror or through your mental image, your mind's eye, what is it that you see? And I'm saying that sometimes what you see is certainly not what God has spoken. It is not what God has birthed into the earth. And it's not what people who actually love, care, and think positive about you is not what they see either. Your perception of yourself is off. And so we want to correct that today and bring us back into divine alignment with what God created when he created you, when he created me in his image and his likeness, that we can go through things in life that can skewer our perception of ourselves. It can skewer our thought of how we even think of ourselves in our mind. It could be neglect, abuse of all kinds, um, even situations like negative words being spoken over your life um, or maybe failures, things that you thought you could do and it didn't happen the way that you thought that it would. And so all these different type of things can come in and it can skew our perception of what the Lord says. It can skew our perception of even what we may have thought about ourselves before that was positive, that was um, beautiful, that was admirable, that was worthy of thinking about, you know, that was respectful. But now that's just not what, not is not what you're doing. And there was a time in my life that I was doing the same thing. I mean, all of my years when I came up, I had absolutely no problem of how I viewed myself, my self-image, especially I'll say my physical self-image, but sometimes my inward self-image when it came to certain um, things, it was off. Like with my academics, because I wasn't performing at the level that I wanted to, when I would see myself or perceive myself, I perceived myself as dumb or I perceived myself as not adequate in that area. But in other areas, I perceived myself as, you know, positive the way God 
um, saw it. And so that had to change that perspective or that perception, excuse me, of myself in that area had to be corrected. All right. So remember that word, correct. <laughs> we are correcting something today. My vision is being corrected by these lens in my glasses. And so our lens that we are looking through in our mind, our mind is also a lens. And so sometimes the mental image, the things that we conceive in our mind, like our thoughts, they are way out of line. All right. And so we want to shift them on um, today. Understand that with things that the way we perceive things is often how we speak. And I remember another time when I went through a lot of things, things I went through in my marriage, things I went through in my career, things I went through in education, things I went through just through therapy, like all kinds of stuff. I was going through different things. And um, I remember by just the long time of going through these things, the way I perceived myself in my mind, it was not healthy. It's like, I don't care how much I looked at myself. I just could not see myself as beautiful. I could not see myself as strong. I could not see myself as smart, courageous. I could not see myself as Tamara. The Tamara that God created when he formed me and fashioned me in my mother's womb, when he put his spirit inside of me, but life was beating me down, right? And I didn't know how to extract those things. I didn't know how to throw those things off. I didn't know how to correct my perception. And so I had to get help from outside sources to come and help me. Like this, these glasses are an outside source. They're not inside <laughs> of my eyes. They are an outside source that's helping to correct something on the inside. Okay. And so this is how sometimes what we need, we're not able to make the correction of our perception of ourselves on our own. So we need outside correctors. That may be your um, pastor. It may be a therapist. It may be a coach. Of course, it's the word of God. You may be, it may be a self-help book. You know, sometimes even an inspirational faith-based movie can bring correction <laughs> to our lenses. And so sometimes we have to have these outside correctors to come in to help us so that we can see rightly. All right. So Let's look at a scripture. Now I'm going to take this off of here. So let's look at this scripture, okay? This scripture is, uh, my, 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 my. we are looking at, um, so let's look first now. We're going to, it says Ephesians 1 and 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So first you have to understand what it is that God is seeing when he sees us or what is it that he wants to see. He wants to see holy. He wants to see blameless. And I'm telling you, if you are a person that's saved and you are filled with the spirit of God, when you act or say or do things that is off from holy and blameless, it can cause you to also skewer the perception of how you see yourself because of disobedience, because of sin, because of anything that you're doing that you know that it is off from the holy and blameless that God um, wants to see in his sight, it can throw you off. And so I'm making that point because if you are in any type of sin, if you are doing anything that is disobedient, like if God has told you to do something, but because you may be afraid or for whatever reason, you're not doing it, I'm making it known to you that that also can skew your perception of yourself. And it can make you think of yourself in a way that is negative, um, unhealthy and certainly not lined up with how God sees you before he created you as a wonderful beautifully made a person in your parent parents womb all right and so I'm saying that to say get it straight all right if you're walking in disobedience you need to walk in obedience it's how can you say you love the Lord but you don't keep his commandments all right so if you're walking in sin blatant sin you need to ask God to forgive you, repent, and then figure out through the word, get you some spiritual help from a pastor, a minister, a mentor or something so that you can walk in holiness because that's going to help to be a lens corrector as well. I mean, a perception corrector. All right. All right. So let's keep going. 
Also, remember, God looks on the heart, not the outward appearance. This is another thing that I'm trying to get you to understand today. How you are on the inside matters what you see on the outside. If your heart is bitter, angry, um, hurt, um, full of malice, envy, jealousy, stuff like that, it's going to skew what you see when you look in the mirror. You can be looking 5,000 honey, made up everything like, oh, I'm fly, but your mental image of yourself, when you look in the mirror, what you see is what's in your heart. You may be showing the world 10,000, okay? But when you look at you, we talking about what's real, authentic. We're not talking about this fake stuff, okay? We all have been there and done that. But I'm talking about in our private times, when, you, when it's just you and God, when you looking in that mirror, it doesn't matter what your outward appearance looks like. What you are looking at is your heart. That's why sometimes when you look in the mirror and you feel like you just disdain yourself, it's because something is going on in your heart and your heart needs to be cleansed. It needs to be purified, okay? It needs to be washed with the word of God. And so that can affect how you see yourself as well. And so you have to understand that you are precious in the sight of the Lord. God honors you. Okay. Sometimes we don't honor him, but there's, but that's not always. There are times there are, we are people who strive to honor God by faith, not in our flesh, but by faith. We work to honor God. All right. And he honors you too. He loves you. He honors you as you're in your position in the kingdom, which is his child. Okay. And then we know we have other references, his bride, because you're a part of the whole church, the bride of Christ. And so he honors you. He loves you. You are precious unto him. So this is important as well, because if your perception of what of what God thinks of you is off, guess what? Your perception of you will be off too. If you don't think he loves you, if you feel like he hates you, if you have shame running rampant inside of you, it's going to skew how you perceive yourself. All right. But when you know what God truly thinks about you, it will help how you perceive yourself. It will help your mental image. It will help the thoughts that you think about yourself. And it will help you to be more um, pleased with what you see when you look in the mirror. Because remember, it's, it's what's going on in our heart that makes us see what's on the outside. You could be the prettiest thing in the world. We all are pretty beautiful people. But when your heart is ugly for whatever reason that may be, it will make you say you're ugly. Okay. And so that's what I want you to understand. It's an inward thing that then it helps what you see on the outside. Remember I talked about my eyes? My eyes are things, this is, this is the biological part of me. This is not. Okay, this is what's the inside, all right? But this is the out thing that's helping me. And what I'm saying is, is that this is our outer appearance, but it's what's on the inside and our heart. What's going on in our soul is what um, dictates what we see in our outer appearance. And even other people too, for real sometimes. Um, And so, so I want you to know who you are and I talk a lot about the word of God. You all, you have to be a reader of the word of God. You have to meditate on his word. You have to sup on that word, which means just to eat the word, which means just to read the word. <laughs> you have to. And I'm going to tell you something. When your perception is off, let me let me show you another image. Let me show you another image. Okay, here we go. Now look at this. Now this image here shows us the life cycle of a butterfly. And you can see all the things, all the, all the cycles of life that it has up until its maturity as a butterfly. And in that image here, 
you see that this butterfly was seeing itself at a beginning stage of its life, but it had already processed and matured through that stage already. And so sometimes when your perception is off, okay, when your perception is off, you are actually cycling yourself through processes of maturation that you actually already successfully gone through, but because your thinking is off, because your mental image is off. And why is that? Because your heart is off. Something inside is off. You are taking yourself through unnecessary cycles. Other people can see that you've come forward, but you can't see that you've come forward. And so if you can't see it, it really is almost of null effect what other people see what other people see can be helpful because it can encourage you you know they can give tell you what truth is they can tell you what's right but if you don't believe it in your heart you make it of null effect okay and so i want to ask you a question when you look in the mirror what do you see and not only that, when you like, sometimes you know how we're in this time where we talk a lot about affirmations. We talk a lot about speaking the word of God, speaking what is true. But if your words, your words have to match action. Okay, they have, there has to be an alignment. And so, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about how, you know, you can go and look at yourself in the mirror, but then once you walk away, you don't even remember what you look like. That's what happens when we speak affirmations, when we look in the mirror and speak the word of God, but then we don't align what we speak with action. You can speak it all day long, but if there's no action to go along with what you're speaking, then it becomes a null effect. And so this is one of the ways that you can actually help to shift or correct your perception is by speaking the word of God. You got to read it and get that thing in your heart first, hands down. You got to read it. So when you're reading the word of God, when you're hearing the word of God, these it is is getting in your mind. And remember we talked about mental image, which is concept, which is a conceived thought. So we're talking about our thought life and these things seep down into our heart. We have to have a mind change. We have to have a heart change. And it starts with reading that word, but then it also goes with aligning our actions with what we are hearing, what we are reading, what we are receiving into our spirit. It's just like I talked about, if you get um, a therapist or a um, or a coach and they are giving you skills and tools and you know you all are going going over different things but if you aren't aligning yourself with these tools that you are um getting it's of null effect so there has to be an action to go along with all of these things now let's make it clear that's not always easy okay sometimes you are going to have to make yourself <laughs> do the opposite until it becomes something that you truly believe is true there was a lot of heart work that I had to do a lot of soul work that I had to do a lot of talking to people that I was close to that some of the stuff that was going on in my heart was because of mess in relationships <laughs> and so before I could perceive myself different I had to get the gunk out and remember, we talked about it. How we perceive ourselves on the outside is actually because of what is on the inside, all right? These corrective lenses would be no good if, they're, if the parts that it's helping to correct weren't in my eye, okay? Even though there are parts of my eye that may need assistance, they still are there to receive the correction. And so your heart is there, all right, to receive the correction. So you still need those insides for the outward things that's helping to correct your perception to work, all right? So I already talked about some ways that we can do that about the word. We talked about books. We talked about, you know, positive interactions, interacting with people who can help you like a therapist or a coach, changing your surroundings, um, changing your environment. Sometimes you have to change the way that you do things. You keep perceiving things incorrectly because your actions are incorrect. 
And so you are you are you are saying one thing, but your actions are saying something else. We have to bring these things into alignment so that you can see yourself as God sees you. So I'm going to be done with this today. I just wanted to get a chance to really kind of hone in on this thing with perception, though, because it is very, very important. A lot of times we lose hope or we can't even grasp the hope that we have in God because our perception is off. The way that we see things are just not in alignment with anything healthy, positive, godly, and just great <laughs> okay but uh, sometimes what we do is we will align ourselves with things that are unhealthy toxic ungodly just um dramatic extra all right and so we want to get our perception corrected today with the word of god with the truth of god and if you need help with that, reach out for the help that you need. There are lots of coaches out here now that love Jesus, who not only will give you practical um, tools, but they also know how to uh, get deep into your spirit, man, that inner self, that heart part, so that you can work on that thing, you and God, that they can pray for you to help you make it through. And I'm actually one of those people. So um, uh, I said that, after a while, I would have my schedule up for the wait list for appointments, but I provide um, therapy, so like clinical counseling, but I also I do coaching, which is what I'm doing now is the coaching. And so if you need that help to help you get your perception renewed so that you can hope thou in God, then that is something that we can work on. I want you to look at one more image for me. And that is this one. Look at this, you guys, okay? And gals, look at this. This is what really is real. Your reflection is beautiful. And your reflection is, you want your reflection to be a true um, representation of who God created you to be from the beginning of time. When you were just a thought in his mind, when he was knitting you together and fashioning you and putting you into your mother's womb, deciding which generation he wanted you to be born in because there was God things that he wanted you to get done in the earth. I want you to see yourself as beautiful and precious in the sight of the Lord because you are beautiful. You are wonderful and you are precious in the sight of the Lord. I want you to know today that you are precious to me I love you. I really do. Like I, I, anybody who's been following me for a while, I tell you all, I know it's a Holy Spirit thing because my joy that I get and fulfillment that I get out of doing these reels and these videos is beyond my, um, even my expectation of what I thought would, would happen. So I love you all so much. And I enjoy giving you this truth because I want to see you hopeful and not um, continuing to look at yourself in a way that is not productive to you or anybody else. Because even if you are living a productive life, it's not authentic. Because, and the, because when you are by yourself, you see something totally different than what you are putting out there to the world. And I don't just want you to be healthy and whole in one aspect. I want you to be healthy and whole in your entirety. Every part of you be healthy and whole in Jesus' name. So let me pray with you and we're gonna go until the next time. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray for my brother, my sister that is listening to this teaching today. I pray, Father God, that you would begin to deal with their hearts. Lord, that they would um, take that bold step to say, you know what? I do need help. I do need God to be a corrector of my perception of how I see myself. Father God, I pray that they will begin to do the heart work and the soul work that needs to be done so that their insides can be cleansed, that their insides can be purged, that their insides can be made 
free and delivered and healed in Jesus' name, that when they look at themselves, Father God, they will behold the beauty and the preciousness that you see when you see them. God, I just bind the enemy, every cursed word that has come against their life and their destiny. I cast it down into the abyss in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I just pray that the spirit of the living God would begin to arise on the inside of them, that they will begin to see that there is a need for change. And not only that there is a need, but change can happen. God, you can transform them into your image, into the image, into your image and likeness, to the image and likeness of your son in the name of Jesus. And so Father God, I thank you for these precious jewels. I pray that you bless them and you keep them, Lord. Make your face shine upon them. Be gracious to them, Lord. Woo! Lift your countenance upon them and give them peace, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Y'all, this is the day that the Lord has made. I want you to rejoice and be glad in it. You can always rejoice in the truth. I don't care what is going on in your life. If you're trying to find a reason to rejoice, you're trying to find a reason to tell God, thank you. Rejoice and be thankful because you are alive and you're breathing. And this is another day that things can change. Another day that your hope can be restored. Another day. Y'all, it's another day that he has kept us. All right, you guys and gals, I love y'all. Bye-bye for now. Okay.